There are 178 cards in the Fallen of Alba's lore. 178 cards that depict a part of the story, the characters involved, and allows to visually see what the world of Fallen of Albaz looks like. In this video series, I'm going to be going through the entire Fallen of Albaz lore and story card by card, showing you exactly how the cards look, how their effects affect the story, and eventually how we got to where we are in the story today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we dive into chapter one in the city of Dogmatica. The first official card in the lore, you would think, might be Nadir Servant, but that's not true. We get an establishing shot of the city of Dogmatica with the card Dogmatica Nation. And this does tell us a little bit about the people who live in Dogmatica. Neither player can target Dogmatica monsters you control with the effects of monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck. This tells us a little bit about the culture of that Dogmatica religion and sort of to say that they're not really welcoming to outsiders who do not share their faith. And this is why you'll see this occurring in a lot of the cards in the Dogmatica archetype. They pretty much hate the extra deck. We're introduced to Dogmatica Ecclesia, who is the virtuous one. She's the promised one. She's going to take over the church someday and she possesses really amazing secret powers of communicating with dragons. In the Art of Deer Servant, we can see Ecclesia and Flirtily the Knighted standing on a balcony outside of the Dogmatica church, looking at the sky as a huge dragon-like figure falls from the sky on fire. This is how the story begins with the fall of Albaz from some magical realm of dragons that we're not currently sure what actually happens there. We're also introduced to the Dogmatica Nexus, which is a huge statue of two dragons in the center of the church, and this is what the people of Dogmatica worship. And it's also a monster in the game. It cannot be normal or special summoned, and it must be special summoned by its own effect by targeting four fusion, synchro, exis, and or link monsters in either graveyard, and you can special summon this card. If you do, you banish those in the grave. And this is similar to Maximus as well. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a special summoned monster, destroy all your opponent's attack position monsters and you burn them from 800 for each fusion, synchro, exis, or link monster destroyed by this effect. So it's not really useful, it's more of a flavor card to show how the Dogmatica treat the outsider. And after that, of course, we have Maximus. Maximus is able to also banish a fusion, synchro, link, or exis monster from the graveyard, and it's also able to send two monsters from each extra deck. After that, we have Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, the Knighted, who is probably Maximus's second in command, chief of his guard, and eventually the one who has to fight Albaz. And lastly, two other members of the tribe are Theo and Aiden. Theo is definitely the muscle of the group, and Aiden is probably a preacher or some sort of a religious figure in Dogmatica Nation. The action starts with Dogmatica Punishment. You can see Fleur de Lis striking down a dragon. This is the dragon that fell down from the sky in the art of Nadir Servant. And as you know, because this card is extremely popular, it's a trap card that targets a face of monster your opponent controls. You send a monster with an equal or higher attack from your extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do, you destroy that monster. This is essentially how the Dogmatica use their power to fight the ones that they considered sinners. And of course, this locks you out of the extra deck, and this is true for a lot of the Dogmatica effects. The dragon that is slain in the art of Dogmatica Punishment is, of course, Titanoclad, the Ash Dragon. Titanoclad is technically the first Albaz fusion monster we see in this story, and it requires Fallen of Albaz in one monster with 2,500 attack or more, which is true for a lot of the Dogmaticas, like Fleur de Lis, for example. But it's pretty likely that this is a fusion of Fallen of Albaz and the Dogmatica Nexus, considering they also look quite similar. Now, each one of the Albaz fusion monsters has something to do with the tribe or the people that Albaz meets through that part of the story. So here, it is the Dogmatica people, and at the end phase, you can special summon or add to your hand either Albaz or a Dogmatica monster. So every time you see Albaz or some sort of monster in one of Albaz fusion monsters effect, you can consider those to be fused together for this fusion to happen. And this card, Titanoclad, is also, of course, immune and unaffected by the activated effects of any monster special summoned from the extra deck, which is in line with how the Dogmatica people see the world. And after striking down the dragon, 
a boy appears in the dust, which is the Fallen Valbaz. And of course, it is very easy to see that Fallen Valbaz fuses with other things throughout the story, and this is why his effect is so crucial to the story itself. By discarding one card, you can fuse with an opponent's monster to make a new one, and throughout the years, we got a lot of different options. The first time Ecclesia lays eyes on Albaz is in Dogmatica Encounter, which is a normal trap card that by its effect, we can see the part of the story they're trying to depict. Special summon one Dogmatica monster or fall of Albaz from the hand, or add to your hand or special summon one Dogmatica monster or fall of Albaz from the graveyard. After this encounter, we are met with a different faction that also lives in the same world as that Dogmatica tribe. They are, of course, the Tribe Brigade. The Tribe Brigade are a pact of beastmen and beast warriors that live in the Golgonda Desert. We'll know more about what they do in the next chapter that we talk about, but this time, we know something very, very simple. The Tri Brigade live in the desert next to the Dogmatica capital. Seeing the burning, flaming dragon falling from the sky in a deer servant, the tribe probably realized something is going on in the capital and wanted to see it for themselves. So they run over to the capital with all of their members. We have the leader of the tribe, which is Tri Brigade Chereg, the ominous Omen, which can just banish a card on the field on summon. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a Beast Beast Warrior or Winged Beast from your deck, whose level is less or equal to the number of banished Beast Beast Warrior or Winged Beast monsters you have. This is essentially saying that Chereg recruits new Beastmen from the desert into the Tri Brigade tribe. We have Rugal, the Silver Sheller. We have Tribe Brigade Ferajit, the Baron Blossom, who's the sniper of the group. And of course, we have other members, Fractal, Karis, and Nerval. They all have similar effects where they can banish any number of Beast Beast Warriors and or Winged Beast Monsters from the graveyard to special summon one of those Tri-types from the extra deck with a link rating equal to the number of banished cards. Now, this is a very unique mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! and this deck was obviously revolutionary for its time. Now, these characters are not all the characters of technically the tribe brigade that live in the desert. These are a part of those tribes that were outcast and united together in the desert. And this is why they are tied so close to each other, even being a little bit different beast from beast warrior to winged beast, they can still unite their powers and, you know, banish those same tri-types from the grave to form and recruit new warriors into the fight. So after being introduced to Rugal, Shrek, Ferrigid, Nerval, Keras, and Fractal, we have the Tri Brigade Airborne Assault, which is a quick play spell card. Now this artwork is beautiful and it depicts two very important characters in the story. On the left side, we have Flirtily charging at the leader of the Tri Brigade, Shrek. You can target one Beast, Beast Warrior, or Winged Beast Monster you control, and you special summon another Tri-Type from the deck in defense position with a different type and attack less or equal to that monster, but their effects are negated. And also, you're locked into Link Monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Now, this card was originally a secret rare when it released, and this on its own has a pretty solid effect. It hasn't seen a lot of play because the deck was very good and consistent, but in terms of the story, we can see something is going on in this artwork. We can see the two faces of two characters that are usually hidden behind a mask. You can see Fleur de Lis mask being broken, and same goes for Shrek. And it also feels like these two characters probably have a history, given the fact that they are two leaders of very strong factions living in proximity to each other, the Dogmatica and the Tri Brigade, they probably have met before and possibly have fought before. We know that Shrek has only one natural wing and one mechanical wing, so possibly Flurly was the one who took his other wing in the past. While these tribes are fighting, the Dogmatica Ashian are deployed. These are sort of like the royal guard of the Dogmatica Church. They are the brutes, they are the warriors, and eventually Ashian, as sort of like second in command or captain of the King's Guard to Maximus, eventually becomes ad libitum when the Dogmatica people turn into Despias later. Now, this is very easy to understand where this effect comes from. If a Synchro, Fusion, Exceser, Link monster is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. If the Dogmatica people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, the Ashians will deploy themselves. If it is special summoned from the hand, you can target a Dogmatica card in the graveyard and add it to your hand. And when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can make all your Dogmaticas gain 500 attack, essentially boosting their strength and protecting them. 
In Tri-Brigade Standoff, we see the next part of the story. Now that the tribes have relaxed, the Ashians were deployed, and now basically the Tri-Brigade are in a standoff versus the Dogmatica people. In the center, we obviously see Ecclesia protecting Albaz, as if to say, don't hurt this boy, there's something about him that I still don't know. The effect says that you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Tri-types, and you can send one monster from your hand to the graveyard to add a tribe again monster from your deck to your hand with a different original type. If it is destroyed in the spell and trap zone, you can activate this effect. Your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn. And this is the part of the standoff that I like. Not being able to declare an attack, being in a truce, being in a peaceful state, and not continuing the fight. But the Ashian have different plans, and in Dogmatica Sism, the equip card, we can see the Ashian deploying their own dark powers and sealing off Ecclesia's seal, Stigmata, on her forehead. And it's also an equip, so that's interesting. It's sort of like a curse that is applied on a person. If the equip monster is a Dogmatica monster, it actually gains attack equal to its level, and if not, it loses 200 attack for each Dogmatica monster you control. If you're a true believer, you gain a benefit from this spell. But if you're not, you will be weakened, which is, I think, extremely cool. Seeing this and being surrounded by the beastmen from the desert around him, Albaz transforms for the second time, and this time to Brigrand the Glory Dragon. Now, it is actually kind of interesting, the fusion materials that are listed on Brigrand, because it requires Albaz and a level 8 or higher monster. Now, Ashian, I believe, is a level 8, but the Tri-Brigades don't really go up to that level. Brigrand is also a beast, which is obviously a reference to the Tri-Brigade, and in the art you can see him holding Ecclesia after she's being cursed by Ashian. It cannot be destroyed by battle, and while you control it, as a fusion summoned card, your opponent cannot target other monsters you control with monster effects. This card essentially protects your field, like it is protecting Ecclesia in the art. And during the end phase, of course, you can add a Tribrigade or Fall of Albaz, or special summon them directly from the deck. Seeing this dragon, the Tribrigade and the Dogmatica people revolt. And in the art of Tribrigade revolt, we can see Brigrand losing control while the two tribes fight against each other. And of course, this is one of the most impactful Tri-Brigade cards that special summons any number of Beast, Beast Warriors and a Ring Beast to form a new monster. And this is perfect for the art and the story because this is the time where the Tri-Brigade say, sort of like, screw it and start fighting because they want to get Ecclesia and Albaz out of the capital. And to wrap up this chapter of the story, Tri-Brigade Oath is the final card of this chapter. Now we can see Albaz and Ecclesia in the desert, in the Tri-Brigade's home. We can see Farajit laying your hand on Dogmatica Ecclesia as she's still recovering from the curse. And of course, the oath and the promise between Shreg and Albaz asking them to venture into the desert under the protection of the Mercuriers to find a special someone also from this tribe. Do you know who this person might be? But besides that, the effect of Tribe Brigade Oath says that you can target a link monster you control and you special summon a beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster with a different type from hand or grave. And if you control at least one of each beast warrior, beast, and winged beast, you can banish it from the graveyard and target a spell or trap your opponent controls and negate its effects. And this has been the first chapter of the Fall of Albaz story, card by card. We've seen the Dogmatica people, we have seen the Tri Brigades and the battle between the two, the first encounter between Ecclesia and Fall of Albaz that begins this wonderful story, and a little promise in Tri Brigade Oath for a new path and a new story going into the desert with these two. In the next chapter, we're going to be seeing the Springans tribe in the desert, the awakening of the Despias, and, of course, some new Albaz fusion monsters. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I will see you in the next chapter of the Fallen of Albaz story, card by card.